Sort of the clothes you wear, or even the color of the room, make a difference in where you're going to get a confession. Let's find out with tip 100. Hey, Stan Walters back with you again. 101 tips for interviewing and interrogation. This is interviewing tip number 100. So I'm asked a lot of times about what color should the interview room be, how should I set it up, or what clothes should I wear. Uh, I've heard comments also about should I wear a uniform, not wear a uniform, shirt, tie, no tie, and so forth. Let, let's be a little realistic here. If color of the room had anything to do with confessions or had anything to do with whether a person's going to cooperate, Somebody's going to be sitting in the kitchen one day and a, a, a federal agent's going to be interviewing them and they say, look, I just can't talk in a green kitchen. Get me to a blue room. Really? You think that makes a difference? Or if, if, if somebody would talk in the blue room, then how come maybe uh, kids in a high school will talk to a, a, a school resource officer and the daggone room is yellow? If color made a difference in, in terms of whether somebody talked or not, then 99% of the time, nobody would be talking because it will not match their particular color of room. Now, if you're going to schedule for office and trying to set dynamics and stuff, I get that. But if you think this is going to make a difference whether somebody talks or not, then you're struggling over some of the worst, most trivial things to worry about. And the same thing happens too with uh, what should I wear in the interview room or to an interview? Okay, here's my answer. Try clothes. I've, I've heard uh, one statement that officers should always wear a uniform and always should demonstrate power and authority. Well, how about some folks that are kind of fighting against power and authority who don't have respect for the uniform? And then there's, yeah, there's going to be some people that like the uniform and they're going to be comfortable with it, but that's on an individual basis. Or whether if, if the only would talk to a uniform, then undercover officers would never get a single piece of information from the subject they busted or witnessed they're talking to. If uniform made a difference, then the guy in the suit or the guy in the golf shirt talking to subject in the middle of the warehouse floor, a loss prevention specialist, would never get a comment from anybody. So let's get over this trivial stuff about how to stage the color of the room and preferred colors or stage what you're wearing or not wearing and all that ridiculous tripe. It all comes down to the, the, the liaison, it, it comes down to the connection and the link between the interview and the subject. I remember many times my dad was a pastor, and you think, a Southern Baptist minister, do you think there was times that my dad was wearing a suit that the person would, would, would find salvation? I remember my dad, and one time we had, a, we had a flat tire, we were way out on vacation, my dad's in the t-shirt, a t-shirt, nobody knew that he was a pastor or whatever, and the conversation engaged with the mechanic working on a car, and that, that guy had a salvation experience there in the, in the garage. Didn't matter that my dad was in a dadgum t-shirt. So let's stop playing with these little silly games and mind games and thinking there's one special conduct, one special color, one special type of clothing, or it always has to be uniform, always have to see the badge. People will begin to overlook that when you sit down and you start talking and treating them with, like an individual, treating them with respect, and you listen to comprehend and not listen to respond. That's rather a big problem. We're listening to that. So uh, to, to respond, so we have an answer back. We're not listening so we can hear what the subject's saying. Look at influence tactics, and we talked about earlier in our other sessions, uh, uh, commitment, like authority, scarcity, social proof, reciprocity, those things have a greater impact on whether a person connects with you or not. Think of the salesperson. Think of the car salesman. Think of the, the stockbroker. Think of the, the guy on the floor of the appliance shop. Does it make any difference what they were wearing or what color or what color the showroom is, if they will or will not buy? Yeah, there's some things that have impact, but it's got nothing to do with all those things. If it was, then 99% of the time, we'd never get information. So let's think about you interacting with the subject. Let's think about listening to hear. Listen to thinking about listening to respond. Let's think about listening to gain information and not listening to try to get a confession. There's a big difference in the in skill of communication and how you set up your situation in the relationship with the individual. Most of them want to be treated with respect and have a chance for somebody to listen to them. So keep that in your head and think about the situations that you're in. If you will, please hit the like button down below. Pass this on from Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, some of my good friends and buddies have been doing this on a regular basis. So appreciate that. 
Uh, if you've got questions about an in-service course or a training program, you know, uh, many times you as an agency know how that even the most competent investigators, some of the best guy in the world, don't get all the information that they need or should be recovering in an interview. And let's try to fix that. Let me work with your agency and your association on those skills. So give me a call and let's talk about planning an in-service program training for you. So when we get back for our final tip, tip number 101, this is Stan Walters reminding you, be safe.